welcome to gagroll.net. My name is Wally Sarkisian. We are going live with, uh, with our friend um, Mihran Kalijian. He is a native uh, Jerusalem, born there, and there is major crisis in Armenia and in Jerusalem. Corruption, corruption, corruption. In Armenia this morning uh, was the news, the deputy prime minister, which is now uh, running for mayor, his mother is racking up all those real estate, becoming multimillionaires. And then also in Jerusalem, this, which is the subject today, the, the patriarchy sold part of Jerusalem, and Armenians are outraged and in protesting. So we thought uh, Mehran is the right man to speak about this because he knows a lot about Jerusalem. He was born there and raised there and served in the military there and all that stuff. So Mehran, welcome. Thank you, Wally, for having me this morning. Um, you know, being raised in Jerusalem and especially in the Armenian quarter and with the latest development, it is very difficult damaging and very sad uh, what is happening uh, to our community and to our Armenian quarter. Um, you know, the Armenian presence in Jerusalem stretches back to 90 BC, but the establishment of the quarter occurred after the nation of Armenia declared Christianity its national religion in 301 CE. After that time, citizens began making pilgrimages to Jerusalem to see the holy sites. And the Armenian quarter is one-fifth of the uh, old city. Before I do any other statement, just this week, there was a very important and significant decision that was made by the Hashemite kingdom and the state of Palestine, where they issued a joint statement announcing their decision to freeze the recognition of the Armenian Patriarch Nurhan Manukian as Patriarch of the Armenian Orthodox Church in Jerusalem and the rest of the Holy Land. And the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, after many efforts and attempts that did not succeed in correct feelings that the real estate of the Armenian quarter, the old city of Jerusalem, with cultural and human heritage and the historical part of the mosaic of the old city. This is very, very important because when we declare uh, and vote to have a leader in the Armenian Patriarch in Jerusalem, they must be recognized by the King of Jordan of Hashemite and Stein. This allowed the Armenian community members Okay, you're you're sort of cutting, so I don't know it's from you or what is happening. Can you hear me now? I hear you. Okay. Can I continue? Yes, please. Yes. So the last decision of the King Hashemite, as well uh, the state of Palestine, to please the relationship, it provides the citizen and the Armenian community to move forward with the removal of the Armenian Patriarchate from his position. When we have any election in Jerusalem, they must be recognized by those two states, and now they were given the first step for them to remove the Armenian Patriarchate of Nurhan Manukian as yet to make any statement or to explain his involvement in this uh, uh, in this fraud and in this also uh, selling the lands which started in 2021. You know, when I was in Jerusalem last year and lots of people in there knew, I interviewed some, but they were afraid to speak. They uh, it says this is all hash hash, you know, the, the deal like, uh, I mean, people were smelling this corruption, but they were afraid to speak out. But right mm -hmm. now it looked like everybody's on the street. And here is a... Uh, um, this is the man, right? 
direct this is the man, the director, the previous director of real estate. His name was Farid and this was he was defrocked by the General Assembly uh, of the Armenian St. James Brotherhood. His name is currently Khachik and this week he ran away after the Armenian Patriarchate have called the police and the military to block the Armenian community members to fight and to block him and then he ran away to the airport. He's currently in Turkey and we know that he will have second steps of arriving to the United States of America. Oh, really? So yes. he's really fleeing, he's running away? Yes, he's running away. This process, it all started in 2021 when he was reached out by a Jewish uh, family from Australia, uh, and uh, they reached out to him, uh, um, and then he was able to create the agreement uh, uh, and bring this agreement to the Patriarch in order for his signature. So there are two major players that they need at the moment answer to the community, the Armenian Patriarchate of Nurhan Manukian, which is now in Jerusalem, and the Armenian community is a powerful community. They will take the necessary action. But another development happened this week that the Armenian community have also the service of a very well-known law firm. They will represent them in order to fight the Armenian Patriarchate and also the Jerusalem of Mayor in the real estate department. So what is what is in stake here? Like, what are they selling? So, uh, so this is a very very important. So this began trickling in 2021 when the former priest Khachik Yeretsian, then the director of the Patriarchate's real estate department, told his network that the Patriarchate that uh, that the Patriarchate in Jerusalem had indeed leased the land to Danny Rubinstein, a Jewish businessman from Australia for 98 years, that Rubinstein intended to build a luxury hotel on the property. The deal was signed in July of that year, and in October, 12 Armenian priests in Jerusalem signed a statement condemning the cell and alleging that it was done allegedly since it was not ratified by the Synod and the General Assembly. But this is actually very difficult to everyone. The deal includes far more land than originally thought, including private homes, shops, and part of the seminary across of the Armenian Patriarchate, casting a ball of uncertainty over the residents and business owners in the area uh, in question. That's incredible. That's really incredible. This. So, so what is the suspicion here? Is this man was corrupted? This man was not only corrupted, but he was he was the master uh, person in the Armenian Saint James Brotherhood that he fabricated this deal with the Armenian Patriarchate Nurhan Manukian without anyone know about it. And then at this week, it came everything out to light. Oh, that's incredible. That's incredible. So who is the one who blew up the whistle here? Is that priest? Uh, the, the, who did this? There are some priests uh, from the Armenian St. James Brotherhood who they showed very severe concern. They reached out to the Armenian community that for them to step up and to take the necessary action to the recent uh, incidents that it's taking away our rights and our presence. Because what this happened, a corrupted corruption, this could erase the Armenian presence. There is also 2% of the Christians in Jerusalem. This will also impact their statico and their presence as well because the Christians was being protected in the 48 and also by the Jordanian and during the British mandate, this mandate could be taken away and the Armenian church and the Christians 
could be badly impacted and they can be removed from their lands and from their real estate that they own. <laughs> Just amazing. Amazing how, how, how this corruption in Armenia... I, I just don't know, like, wherever you turn, there is corruption, you know, like, it's, uh, it's in Armenia, again, uh, there is the same situation. Um, is, can this be reversed? I, I think I'll ask you, but again, can it be reversed? You know, uh, this is a very good question, but with the rights in the Holy Sepulchre and also in the Holy Places, if the Armenian community, they don't stop. And they receive a wider support from the diaspora and to fight the Armenian Patriarch and the General Assembly, this could be reversed if they are done correctly. The removal of the Armenian Patriarchate could be a second option as the Armenian community are frustrated, they are in pain, they are in shock. But by, by collecting enough signatures it will allow them under the charter of the Armenian uh, ch church in Jerusalem to go for a re-election because they need to start from, from scratch. Um, but, but this patriarchy is independent, is not associated with neither Armenia, neither uh, here, right? It's an independent institution. Right. So... You are right, you know, this is a home. We have many communities in the diaspora, but it is not the same as there in Jerusalem. Uh, without the Armenian presence, the Christian presence is way more endangered. And this will remove the Armenian quarter, which is one-fifth of the old city. What the Armenian Patriarchate is not doing and not responding and not be having an open statement, it tells everything. Because his signature was on that deal that was signed with the Israeli businessman from Australia. So it's just one signature, one person? You need, you need to have several signatures for this deal to be adopted and accepted. Uh, but two of them are the Patriarchate, the former real estate, and there was another archbishop which his signature was forged, and he did make a statement to the Armenian community. Hmm. So what do you think diaspora can do, like uh, especially diaspora Armenian church, do they have any influence? Can they do anything? The Armenian diaspora can fund the legal process uh, to the law firm that was uh, signed an agreement with the Armenian community in Jerusalem and uh, because legally the Armenian community has the right to fight and also the constitution of the Israeli Supreme Justice will allow them to reverse and as well to put the pressure of having an election of a new patriarchate in Jerusalem. Here is like, let me run this. The Armenians in Jerusalem are protesting. So obviously all Armenians in there are against this. All the Armenians are against of what happened. This is actually a cancer, what happened to the Armenian community, a slap on their face, where two individuals, the Patriarch and the former real estate, they took the deal, they signed in order to get rid of all our uh, uh, richness of the real estate that we have. The Armenian so community throughout all the old communities and the political power are now together fighting. So why did Armenia this long stayed silent? Now they're starting up making noises. But this is because, as I mentioned, I was in Jerusalem last year. They knew about this, but they didn't make any issue about it. 
So what happened that the police start going to the houses and asking from the Armenian homeowners to leave their houses. What? And mm -hmm, and when they when they has been asked for what reason, they said the house your house has been sold in the deal throughout the Armenian patriarchal deal uh, to the Australian uh, businessman. How bizarre is this? Yeah. So they didn't, they didn't know even what's happening. So what happened is now? Are they still in their home? They are, still, they are still in their home. They are still in their business because of the protection that they have during the Jordanian time to the holy places. Uh, so they are going to fight back because the Armenian will not leave the land and they will do a, a white revolution of the removal of the Armenian patriarchate, the new election, because there are members of the St. James Brotherhood who are overseas, who are in the United States. They don't support such action and such incident that happened. Um. What I uh, I was there. There is the quarter, mm -hmm. and then there is in front of it. There is the seminary, and there is parking. Is right. that part they sold it? That's that's exactly what we are talking about. The Armenian seminary has been sold, and the parking it's called Goveru Bardes. The Goveru Bardes has been for the Armenians over hundred of years. So that is what they sold first. They sold it, they said it's 99 years lease. So it doesn't work that way. The 99 lease, it means you own the property. Yeah. And then when they sold that, there are also some other shops in the cross of the Armenian patriarchate, they sold these shops as well. So you, you think uh, it's reversible? But it need lots of, lots of support. Hundred percent. It needs a lot of support, and it needs a lot of legal action because the court will entertain this legal case, and then it will provide uh, also a an immunity for the Armenian community in in Jerusalem. I think you mentioned that there is attorney, the higher attorney there, Armenians? Yes, uh, there is actually a law firm. Uh, it's an Armenian-American law firm, well-known uh, originally from Chicago, that they've been following the recent developments in the Armenian quarter of Jerusalem very intently. And as they know, this law firm has a global expertise in complex matters of international law and human rights, particularly in areas concerning the rights and protections of Armenians, whether in Armenia, Artsakh, or diaspora. And their representations have included presented setting representations against the Republic of Turkey, Azerbaijan, but they believe that the cause is of what happening in Jerusalem is one of historical national significance and the Armenian community in Jerusalem right now is championing issues of paramount importance to the survival and security of the Armenian quarter of the old city. So that's why this firm could be a, a, a very important uh, uh, task force body in order to protect the Armenian community and also the lands that was sold uh, uh, to, the, to the Jewish uh, businessman. Yeah, I think the, I think you're referring to Karnik. The yes, he's he's involved in many many issues, right. Artsakh and that. Oh, you know, they're they're good if they're involved in, uh, uh, because Armenia in Los Angeles they have uh, uh, bar association, so I'm sure they probably uh, get involved in this. It's just, Nothing. yeah, it's like. The secrecy is like even Army and Pashinian signed the the capitulation secretly, never consulted anybody, and he, now he says, "Well, this is official document," you know. So it's it's I don't know. Being Armenian is not easy. 
Uh, being Armenian is not easy, and I am asking from all the diaspora Armenians and the Armenian leaders and the advocates to raise their voice and to protect the, the interests of the Armenian presence in Jerusalem and to ask for a new elections immediately and to support the efforts to reverse those lands and the businesses and the houses back to their own uh, decision makers. Yeah. Um. 1200 year that thing's been in there mm -hmm. nobody did any like there was empire after empire after empire the armenians survived there and now the corruption is within they were destroying this is the problem this is the same problem in armenia i've been saying always the problem is within not from right. outside it's always mm -hmm. and this yeah. is this is exactly what happened in Armenia. It's within. When you have your enemy within, you cannot do anything. They destroy you. It's like That's a cancer. Correct, Wally. We always had within the Armenian St. James Brotherhood the same problem. But this is the worst. Yeah, uh, this is the worst. This is damaging. Uh, you know, you are taking away the presence of the Armenians of Jerusalem for, for what they belong and who they belong to. This is going to have an, a, a negative impact on the presence of the Christians. And then they, and the Jerusalem mayor could have the veto and the power to erase the Armenians and the Christians from the Christian quarter of Jerusalem. This is very, very dangerous and very, very painful. Uh, I have no words to explain my frustration because it did impact my family as well. Hmm. You know, so, my family owns a land for over a hundred years, but the Armenian Patriarchate and uh, the former director of real estate made false accusation, and it was a such painful process in the court. But we need to continue to fight with the church in Jerusalem. We need to continue to fight with everyone who is involved. Now is the time for the Isporian Armenians to step up and to put the pressure. I know there are many Armenians of Jerusalem, they live in California, and I know that they are attached uh, to the Armenian quarter. They should step up without any hesitation and they need to fight till the end. Well, you know, I really thank you for, you know, you're taking this case and bringing to people attention. Most people, uh, we just heard about these stories, like, you know, a couple of weeks stories. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know, I, I'm repeating, uh, when I was in Jerusalem, it seems to me everybody knew about it, but they were even fearful to talk about it. But at mm -hmm. least now everybody's talking about it, you know. Huh? And I just, in fact, when I was in Jerusalem, I asked, who, who could I talk? Can I meet those uh, priests and things? He says, no, no, you can't do that. Of course, because the priests were instructed by the patriarch, if they make any statement, they would have been defrocked or they have been released from their position within the St. James Brotherhood. Now, that is not the case. There is a unity between the members of the St. James Brotherhood, the Armenian community, as well advocates, politicians, legal staff, to fight this till the end. So in uh, you are in U.S., you are in California. Correct. Have you contacted any Armenian organization? Like, for example, there is Pan-Armenian, which is a uh, combined of 20 organizations, if they could raise their voice or... How about Armenian Church in uh, in Ar Armenia, and also there's a big Armenian Church in uh, Burbank. Um, so the, the possibility to have a, a, a successful outreach, uh, it should not be any church, whether it's in Burbank or Armenia. This is not under their legislative umbrella. Uh, the church would not have a voice. Even the Catholicus of Armenia has no voice. Yeah. The Armenian Church is, is, is an independent. However, under the charter of the Armenian Church in Jerusalem, 
the Armenian organizations, they can raise their voice and block with the support of working with the Armenian community in, in Jerusalem. And I am already doing my uh, strenuous efforts in reaching out to organizations that I believe they could be a, a realistic solution by working with our Armenians in Jerusalem. Well, you know, thank you for your hard work. You know, uh, this is this is very important. This is really it's it's like an Artsakh, you know, like those guys in in Yerevan, and they just sold it, and now we have this. You know, <laughs> our crisis is just suddenly is is duplicating. Uh, this is a suicidal of what happened selling the land. I agree. And this suicidal, it's a cancer brought up by two individuals. And now the Armenian community of Jerusalem are struggling in a very painful way. I am, uh, and the Armenian presence is very critical to everyone. There is no personal interest. We should all join the efforts together. We should all fight together. The, yeah. the, even the members of the St. James Brotherhood that they are here today, whether in New York or California or Chicago, they must all come together and build a strong coalition and alliance in order to fight back. Yeah, definitely. How about the Jewish community? What do they say? The Jewish community was, they were waiting for the moment to take over every inch of the Armenian quarter. You know, uh, they, we, we are not treated well by the Jewish uh, uh, government or by the Jewish community. We feel we are a second class citizen. So when, they, when the priests, they are walking, they spit on their face and the police would not do anything. Uh, the the uh, the the settlers that they they are in in Jerusalem, the Jewish settlers organizations. This is a very important to them, taking over the heart of buildings within the Armenian within the Jerusalem, because this will have an impact later on politically as well to the future of Jerusalem itself. But there is a fight. There are some Jewish organizations that they are uh, they disagree with the current with the current incident happened in Jerusalem and expect that the Supreme Court must modify and interfere immediately to give protection to them. Well, Mr. Kelijan, thank you very much for your hard work. I'm happy that you you're working and also explain the whole things. And I hope there will be some success on this. And I really thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going uh, to let you uh, finish it, whatever you want to say, the last word. Uh, thank you, Ms., uh, Mr. Waller, for bringing this important issue to our community. So we make clear of what what's going on. As, uh, as, a, as Armenian from Jerusalem, I will not stop the fight to my rights in Jerusalem and out to our land and to our, uh, to our community. Um, I am asking again to urging every Armenian to step up and to come together. The coalition and the alliances of working together, we will bring our lands together. Our properties are not for sale. Our properties belongs to us of long years of presence in Jerusalem. Um, and I thank you again for this opportunity as well. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope uh, some good things come out of this. And uh, thank you very much for your hard work. And uh, keep us up to date. If you hear anything, you're welcome anytime. We'll okay. update uh, the people, you know, what is going on. Again, thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. So uh, to our viewer, well, please get involved in this. Um, I know there is uh, lots of people from Jerusalem. They have their organization and get involved and spread the word and uh, 
I talk to your even American politicians. Maybe they could influence uh, this this outcome. It's it's a disaster. But finally, people are speaking now. A year ago, when I was in Jerusalem, people were fearful to talk about it. So now, everything is out. And uh, do your best, and spread the word, and we'll see what happens. Again, thank you very much. We'll see you in another episode. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.